Hey, how's it going guys? This is Zedai here. So I wanted to share my thoughts on the very recent finished up state of play that came up on 30th of May 2024. Now I want to be honest, overall the showcase was, well, okay, maybe, good, I just have quite mixed feelings about this, uh, just overall general showcase. And perhaps it is my fault since I had higher expectations. And also, we didn't even know if it would have been a showcase or a state of play, so kind of granted, <laughs> you know, our expectations would have been a little bit through the roof. Nevertheless, state of play finished up, I got mixed feelings about it. I want to get into through the individual games, what I thought about, and also a few of the games I'm, I'm purposely not going to mention because I genuinely have no interest in them. But let's get into the very first game that they have presented was Concord. Now the first CGI whatever cinematic trailer, it didn't do anything for me, right? We've seen this time and time again, and after watching it, I'm just like, I'm so burned out, you know, it's just, I feel numb to it, you know, I feel nothing for it. Nevertheless, there are some quirky, funny, good moments within the CGI trailer. Now, okay, so afterwards, we actually finally got to see the gameplay of Concord. Now, I... Uh, not exactly what I expected. So this is basically a, P a 5v5, it's an Overwatch game, man. Uh, a hero shooter once again comes into the play that we, it's super, super oversaturated now with so many similar games such as the, you know, hero shooters. And yet this is no different. Now I did hear something about that this team, uh, right? They're actually working on this game since 2018. Really? Is that true? God, I hope it's not, because this took them six years to make, and yet this concept and this idea is super just outdated. It kind of makes sense why they're still coming up with this hero shooter. It, we gotta move on, bring in new things. Like, I don't have any problems if they would have been something, well, maybe single player related, because single player games, even though they're very much oversaturated, but at least they tell different stories in different ways. At least that's more entertaining. In this case, 5v5, where have we not seen this before? We have seen this everywhere. Oh man, I was so disappointed because of that. And also the quality of the graphics anyway, it genuinely does look good actually. I really do think it looks good. Like definitely better than Overwatch, better than Valorant as an example. But yeah, I get it because they're gonna more a little bit cartoony and artistic vibe. This is a little bit more groundbreaking in terms of the quality, like for example, more on the realism turn. Nevertheless, you know, this is very heavy inspiration, so Guardians of the Galaxy, especially this Bush CGI trailer that we didn't even need. But nevertheless, I hope this game is a free-to-play, because if this game is not, well, I'm sorry, this game is dead on arrival. Sure, maybe a month or two it will come through, yeah, and everybody will play, or at least try it out. And if it doesn't hold up, oh man, if it's, I don't see any future with this game, unfortunately. Now, maybe I'm being way too negative and harsh about this, but this is, I'm just being realistic in this case. I'm very much not interested in what we, what we have seen. But what actually genuinely surprised me, well, maybe not so much, but actually it's getting a beta in July of 2024, and it's gonna be available on PlayStation 5 and PC. And then with its final, well, launch, it's coming August 23rd, 2024, uh, on PlayStation 5 PC, of course, that is a big shocker to me. It's like, I never expected them to release this so quickly after when they show, show, showed off all this. And that's, wow, that's impressive. Like, I never, it's quite close, basically. So I'm kind of glad about that. At least I get to try a little bit earlier. God of War Ragnarok on PC releases September the 19th, 2024. Well, what can I say? It has all the bells and whistles of what PC should have. And uh, yeah, it's nothing really new for me here, but nevertheless, it genuinely looks awesome. Now, I'm not going to be replaying it on PC. My preference platform is PlayStation 5. Nevertheless, I do uh, hope that PC guys will have a fantastic time with this experience because this genuinely is a masterpiece, 10 out of 10 easily. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to have a fantastic and fantastic time with this game anyway. So I decided to put it in here anyway, and not necessarily to say that I think I will be picking it up or not, I most likely won't. It's a Dynasty game, I don't know, Dynasty Warriors Origins by the name's coming 2025 for PlayStation 5. Nevertheless, it just this trailer didn't really do much for me, it didn't explain to me what it is. Now I do know there are older Dynasty Warrior games, 
I'm not very much interested in them, but it definitely kind of intrigued me a little bit. That's why I'm mentioning it here in the first place. Nevertheless, I want to move on. So here's an odd one, a very odd one. I think you'll be surprised and perhaps even shocked that I'm even matching in here and perhaps maybe you thought that I would just glimpse through and just go to the next game. Infinity Nikki. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I'll be honest. First up, first reactions when I saw this, I completely wrote her off. I genuinely like, in my notes, nope, not getting it, not interested. I'm not even going to mention it in this, uh, you know, my thoughts video. Until I saw this video from IGN, the preview of Infinity Nikki, I was actually kind of surprised to see that this game is not exactly what I thought it would turn out to be. This is obviously a cutesy game, right? A girly anime style, right? Now, then I started looking more into this preview and listening through and seeing the gameplay, like a proper raw gameplay. I kind of liked what I've seen. But nevertheless, there are so many gimmicky, mo not gimmicky, but so many weird decisions made here. It really like turns me away from this game and I just like, oh man, I kind of don't want to play it. But nevertheless, it interested me. That was odd, very odd. Like, it's not worth for me, but yet, wow. <laughs> uh, okay, so next up, Ballard of Antara, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah, it's released in 2025 and it's quite unique, it has very good combat, looks great and it's actually free to play, RPG game, so that's awesome. So nevertheless, you know, to experience something like this, it's always nice to see. So, oh, just realized actually it's called Ballad, Ballad, right, I have pronunciation, I said with Ballard, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of... It didn't show us the raw gameplay, unfortunately, so I can't really make judge of it if I want to kind of experience it for myself or not. Nevertheless, I have my eyes on this for sure. So there were some PSVR 2 games uh, that just did not interest me. Yes, even including Aliens game in it. I, like I said, not for me. And Alien Rogue Incursions. Uh, I'm not really a fan of Aliens anyway, in general, these types of IP and titles. Okay, so I'm moving on. Marvel's Rivals, the only reason I'm gonna even mention it here is because, well, you know, so many incredible heroes within it. But yet again, NetEase, it's like a mobile game. Now it's coming on PlayStation 5. Uh, whatever, moving on. Okay, so here's a, a very big game that I'm sure a lot of people are kind of excited. And I'm talking about Where Winds Meet. Now, this game, about two years ago, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, actually got a raw gameplay. This game looked absolutely out of this world, like in, genuinely incredible. It, just that the cutscenes are incredible, like them in top of the top of notch, genuinely. Now the gameplay seemed a little bit different compared to that uh, gameplay that I've seen two years ago with open world elements, because this game is open world, because this trailer only showcased the boss fights and boss battles and, you know, just encounters within the bosses. But it didn't really show us a proper glimpse in towards the open world elements like that trailer that we have gotten two years ago. I think it actually would have done a better job of representing what you should be playing within this game. I kind of hope that actually in terms of the quality it will stay the same as it did back in two years ago. But yeah, I am interested with the, with this game. Now I have to see more since what, what things have been changed, what things have been taken away, some things have been added. You know, comparing this to the gameplay two years ago, uh, two years ago again. But yeah, nevertheless, I think I like what I've seen here. Unfortunately, it's still only coming out quite late. Uh, if not, wh when is this even coming out? Okay, in my notes, I actually don't have the date, so this means there is no official uh, year window even. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. It might even come out 2026. Who knows? So I'm gonna mention here anyway because I actually played it and platinumed it back in I think 2014, 2015 when it initially launched. I'm talking about uh, Until Dawn. So this is basically a remake and it's releasing fall of 2024 on PlayStation 5 and PC. Now this game, uh, it didn't impress me. Right now, sure, you can just make a comparison. You see, you uh, looking by an uh, older version of Until Dawn to this new version of Until, Until Dawn, and I'm sure you'll see and spot few differences and improvements and stuff like that. But nevertheless, this remake, so called remake, uh, it did not do anything for me. Now, it's closer to a remaster than anything, but you know, touched up even more than that. 
but nevertheless, uh, it did not impress me. Now, will I be picking it up? It really depends on the price point. If this game is like full price tag or even 50 bucks, man, this is asking a lot because this game is not that long. Um, well, because of the replayability value as well, so perhaps maybe they'll justify just having it as a $50 price tag. But personally, for me, I don't think there is a reason for me to come back and replay because I do believe this is sort of a game that will be on PlayStation Plus subscription like a year after its launch, and so it's going to be free for all those subscribers. Nevertheless, I am not going to be playing this on day one. i not that interested, if that makes sense. <laughs> So there was, you know, Path of Exile 2, I, it did not interest me, I don't really like those Diablo games, or of course like Path of Exile. Now, Silent Hill 2 Remake, it's got its own brand new trailer, and I'll be honest, at first when I watched this trailer, I didn't, it didn't impress me, because honestly, something about this looked off really off. Now, everything around the main character looks good. It really does look good, but the way your own protagonist moves and his move set is so maybe clunky or just so many limitations. It just doesn't seem like the game is ready. It doesn't, and I think it needs more time in the oven. Like at least push this game for another year. Like release it at the end of 2025. Now I get that because it's actually a bad idea. There's so many big incredible games coming on 2025. 2025 guys is gonna be a very big year and I'm gonna make a video about that for sure later on like I still want to see Xbox showcase Ubisoft showcase and so many others so there's gonna be plenty more opportunities 2025 is gonna be a ginormous year and uh, yeah it's kind of dangerous to actually delay this game maybe that's why you know they're gonna release it in October 8 uh, 2024 then then I actually have seen Silent Hill transmissions and they showed off a proper role gameplay of this Silent Hill 2. It looked good. About again, all my points and regarding how it looks off, looks kind of outdated, it's all there. But the gameplay looked good. And I'm it turning, it's turning things around for me. And I feel like I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing here. Remember guys, I said myself like a few times already before in my previous videos, that I'm not very much a big fan of Silent Hill games in general. This kind of interested me. It's odd. So next up was Monster Hunter uh, Wilds. This, you know, if you're a fan of Monster Hunter, you will love this game. You will love Monster Hunter Wilds. And if you like Monster Hunter World or Iceborne, I believe as well, you will love this game. And for me, not so much. I played Monster Hunter uh, World and I played Monster Hunter uh, Iceborne. I, I finished them. I put a lot of time and effort into them. I just couldn't continue playing them. Something about them looks just didn't really vibe with me. Nevertheless, if you like that kind of slow, in some cases even very limited, and also kind of a very heavy precision and timing-wise gameplay, then yeah, I think you will definitely love this because this is everything from Monster Hunter World to Iceborne is all present here. And of course, there's some added touch-ups and additions. But nevertheless, it's not it's not really for me, but I can definitely see why people will love and have loved what they have seen from this uh, from this title and unfortunately it's coming 2025 like i mentioned there's so many big games coming out 2025 it's going to be quite a heavy competition and yeah 25 2025 is going to be a very competitive year as well and uh, last but of course not least the most perhaps the best trailer and the best game yeah astrobot Astrobot releases September the 6th. It's a very exciting, fantastic trailer. It's got so much going on, seriously. And I just hope it doesn't lose that kind of a element and that spark that Astrobot Playroom actually got uh, for free for all the users that bought a PlayStation 5 console. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like uh, this game, Astrobot, that's what they call it anyway, it's not like Astrobot 2 or whatnot is not going to be free instead you're going to have to purchase it and i'm not too sure if it's going to be a full price full price tag i kind of hope it's not but nevertheless it seems like and it is going to be more of the same but in a much much bigger scale and i'm down for this this trailer was awesome i love astrobot playroom and i hope it's more of the same in here but it looks at things from this trailer it does seem to be the same 
and man i cannot wait to get my hands on this and platinum the shit out of it because i love the astrobot <laughs> But yeah, this was basically the showcase. What did you think about the state of play in May of 30th, 2024? Personally, for me, like I mentioned, overall the show, well, I kind of have mixed feelings about it. A few games I think I like, and a few games also I really like, and quite a lot of other games I'm just like, oh my god, I feel numb to it, or whatever, you know, that kind of feeling. Like, the biggest disappointment, honestly, like, a disappointment, not a bad game, like a really shit game. No, 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 I didn't really have that. But this disappointment was Concord. Man, that is so disappointing. Oh, it really is much... Oh, damn. Whatever, I guess. But, yeah, nevertheless, I hope that PlayStation State of Play or Showcase will be brought back in September. Maybe they could do something else that they could show off in 2025 that could be something coming out because there was just no big hitters, like no big announcements. What's, what's with that? Maybe they were trying to preserve the expectations from a lot of, for a lot of people and that's why they didn't end up showing all, all the best things that people actually want from PlayStation. But yeah, what can we do, right? Anyway, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe. See you guys all and have a wonderful day.